So my name is Julia and I'm here with my friend Bill. We're just continuing our discussion of protein here at the pharmacy. What about protein powders? You know, I, I hear a lot of the young people uh, talking about protein powders. Is it right for me to, uh, to have protein powders? That's a good question, Bill. So as we talked about, you can get all of your protein needs by eating a variety of Canada's food guide servings from the protein, the meat and alternatives and the milk and alternatives groups. Okay. But if you are looking to get that little bit of extra boost of protein, protein powders can be a convenient way to increase the amount of protein you're taking in your diet. The key is gonna be to look for something that doesn't have a lot of extra sugar or fat. A lot of the kids nowadays are using these products in order to bulk up and so they have a lot of other fillers that are added to them that will also cause weight gain. For someone like yourself who's just looking for that protein component, you really want to make sure that what you've got is focused in on just the protein. So I've got a product here that's going to be a natural source whey protein isolate and as you can see it says unflavored. So that's going to give me a pretty good sense that when I turn it over and take it a look at the label, sure enough there's very little added sugar, there's very little added fat, and mostly what I'm getting is protein. In this case 25 grams. Whatever you're looking for, you want to make sure that there's a minimum of 15 grams of protein per serving to really be getting that benefit. Now some of these other products you can see, we've got some chocolate flavored, we've got some vanilla flavored over here, and sure enough, when we go and look at the products, we're going to see that there's going to be more sugar and more fat per serving in each of these than there would be in these isolated forms. I found these two iron or two supplements. Can you tell me which one that I should have? Definitely. So we've actually got quite a few here, um, and which one you need to have, Bill, will depend on what your doctor has recommended for you. But we can talk about a couple of tips. Now, at the pharmacy, the majority of the iron that you can get is going to be stored back behind the counter with the pharmacist. And that's because the risk of tox toxicity with iron can be pretty high. So we want to make sure that people are taking it recommended by a doctor. We've got a couple of forms here, which I'll start with. So a ferrous fumarate and a ferrous gluconate. So these two are going to be the same form of iron, um, which is one of the best absorbed forms. Now, like many supplements, it's key to look at the amount of elemental iron. Now your doctor will know this when he's prescribing the one that you need, but for your own information, you can see here, this one contains 100 milligrams of elemental, whereas this one only contains 35 milligrams. Mm -hmm. So normally our inclination would be to say, well, 100 is better, right? right. Go big or go home. But um, with iron, it's actually better absorbed in smaller doses. So if someone could take two doses of 35, they might get more iron absorbed into their blood from their stomach when mm -hmm. they take it versus taking one dose all at once. I see. The other thing that's common with iron for people is that often they'll get side effects. So they might um, get some constipation or some nausea. So taking it in a smaller form can help with that. Okay. Also taking it with food can help with that. And including a lot of fiber and fluid in your routine can help with that as well. Right. Now the last kind I have in front of me here is a prenatal multivitamin. And you might be thinking, whoa, Julia, why are you <laughs> holding up a prenatal multivitamin for me? The trick with this is this is the only form of extra iron that you can get that's available here in the pharmacy on the shelves rather than through prescription. Mm -hmm. So if you know that your iron tends to be a little bit low different times of year, maybe you're not eating as much of those um, rich foods from the food group that contain iron, like proteins for example, maybe then you need to be considering something like this. Mm -hmm. It'll just allow you to take a multivitamin with a little bit of extra boost of that iron. Okay, yeah. Is it possible to get too much iron? Yes, so as we talked about, we definitely keep it for the majority behind the shelf at the pharmacy because toxicity is possible. Mm -hmm. So it's very important when you do get prescribed iron to talk to your doctor about the times that you should take it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that if you are doing something like a split dose of a smaller format, that you're um, making sure not to overdose on that. Okay. And that you're taking it apart from any medications that it might interact with or any other supplements. Um, and your pharmacy and your doctor or your healthcare provider can always help answer those questions. Excellent, thank you. Thanks.